Greetings everyone and welcome to Back to Ashes, my name is Phoenix. If you are new here and begin to like what you are listening to, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button. Also, set your notification bell to all, as it will remind you of every time I upload a video which happens to be daily or every other day. If you would like to learn how to become a member of the channel, all that can be found in the description below. Without further ado, it is now time to go back to ashes, for once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person every day. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled, True Ouija Stories. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I'll read the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. I've never been into paranormal stuff because I've had enough activity happen to me over the year. Over this past summer, my friend and I decided it was a good idea to make our own Ouija board and play it, right at their house and also at the cemetery. They asked it stuff and I knew was true, but they didn't. Right there, I could sense it was a real thing. Then, out of curiosity, my friend Kay says, Will our friend P be pregnant at age 19? And the planchette slid to yes. Flash forward a few months later, and I get a phone call from P saying she's actually pregnant. And in that moment, I have never been so awestruck and freaked out at the same time. Nothing like that has ever worked, and now I'm a little more freaked out. Now that I know the board actually worked, I cannot believe that it came true and that the board predicted something insane like that. I'm kind of excited about the other stuff we ask it, but also very leery of it too. Many years ago, as a 14-year-old staying overnight at a friend's house with three other friends similar ages, We'd all grown up together, except one who was a cousin of the kid who lived there, and we'd never met him before. His older sister, 16 at the time, was the babysitter while the parents were out for the evening. She decides to unearth a Ouija board from a cupboard somewhere, and thinks it'll be a laugh to scare us shitless. This was back in the days when you could buy Ouija boards as a board game from your local toy store. So we all gather around, and she starts off with a kind of yes-no lie detector directing questions to the each of us in turn. Cue nervous giggles, but also a feeling of unease as we all began to feel like this was awesomely amazing like some kind of secret that we'd all been unaware of before. Shit gets strange when the sister asks out loud that if anybody is here, please show yourself. A pause of a few seconds, and then a framed picture falls off the wall and onto the floor. Naturally, we all freak the fuck out. She calms us all down and insists we go back to the board because we have to help whoever knocked the picture down. Ashen-faced and hearts pounding, we start asking questions. And I should also add the pointer is moving smoothly and rapidly in a complete different manner than before. Are you in the room? The planchette says yes. Are you a man? Planchette says no. Do you need help? Planchette said no. What's your name? Planchette spells S-A-R-A-H. Tell us a secret, we ask. Planchette spells out F-L-I-P-A-C-O-I-N. So we did. Someone leaves the table and gets a ten-piece from out of the loose change jar in the kitchen. This was in the days when ten-pence coins were big and chunky. 
the coin goes spinning high up into the air. As we watch it coming down, it stops spinning and serenely falls edge down to land on the table. And when I say land, it didn't bounce. It didn't rock. It just came down and met the table, perfectly balanced on its edge, as if someone had reached out and gently placed it there. Breaking the silence, the pointer starts moving again, seemingly random letters. We soon realize their initials, including middle names. Family tradition for my friend and his sister was to have three middle names, something not all of us knew. Aside from the brother and the cousin, no one else would have known the older sister's full name, and we met the cousin for the first time that night. Somehow, every person present had their initials correctly spelled out to them. The planchette pauses and then spells out three last words. Children, stop now. Took me many, many weeks to be able to sleep properly. No one told their parents, and over the years, it became our collective shared secret. Couldn't rationalize it then. Still can't rationalize it to this day. I've gone back and forth on the idea of actually posting my story for a long time, and after searching through a lot of groups, it seems like this is the best place to discuss it. I still have my reservations, though. Will people ask questions I don't have the answers to? Does it feature cliches that will make people question the truth of my experience, as I've described it? Is this really the best group for it? In any case, I'm just going to go for it here. I'm kind of looking for answers, I guess I would say, but I barely even consider myself a member of the paranormal realm. When I was younger, I lived in a haunted house. Yes, seriously. But it's been a while. I just want to share this and see what people make of it. I get the impression that you might be more experienced in this than I am. Okay, so several years ago, I was doing my undergrad studies at a large university in Pennsylvania. This even happened in 2005, maybe 2006. I was dating a girl, Aaron, at the time, who was big into New Age ideas, paganism, magic, and the like, and I did learn some cool ideas from her. Eventually, I met some of her like-minded friends, and in our conversations, it came up that one of the rooms in the oldest buildings on campus caused two of them, a guy and a girl who were dating, to experience a lot of psychic distress. Kyle had gotten nosebleeds in the classroom, and Julie often grew disoriented or frightened when she was there. Someone in our group had the bright idea to sneak up there one night, and of course, we all went for it. It was me, Kyle, Julie, Aaron, a medium named Audra, her friend Shannon, and another girl named Keisha. Sharon and Keisha, like me, had had a lot of supernatural experiences in the past, but didn't consider themselves mediums or sensitives or anything like that. So, one night, we bought a novelty Ouija board from Walmart, a glow-in-the-dark one, because why not, and started doing our thing. At first, the planchette didn't do anything, but then it started twitching, and eventually, it was whipping around, choosing letters that made no sense to any of us. Afterwards, Kyle was writing the letters down. Then, out of nowhere, Audra started many convulsions. I don't know how else to describe it. Her eyes rolled up and she started spasming and making these horrific big noises. Not just snorting or squealing, but belting those noises out like I never thought a human through would be able to. She started crawling her way to the door. The planchette was going crazy, 
and when Kyle jumped at her to keep her from heading towards the stairs, which were directly across the hall, I think, we all kind of snapped out of it. Audra was a small, slim girl, but it took three or four of us to keep her from leaving the room. And all the while, there were still horrible noises coming from her, and we all had this incredible sense of danger or foreboding. There wasn't a terrible smell or anything like you read about sometimes, but it truly was terrifying. Not to be anticlimactic here, but after we packed everything up, we went back to my crappy apartment over a crappy pizza shop and stayed huddled together for quite a while that night. I swear I threw out the Ouija board, but years later, I would find it under my bed at my parents' house when I was packing up to move. I can't swear a 100% to throwing it out, but I also can't imagine why I would have held on to it, brought it home, and stowed it under my bed. Seriously, any thoughts or similar experiences or general comments would be great. So, about two years ago, my Nana brought home a Ouija board that she found at a yard sale. I have always been a true believer in the paranormal, and it's always been one of my peak interests. I have heard or read enough stories and watched enough shows to know not to mess around with a Ouija board, and quite frankly, they kind of freaked me out, so I wanted nothing to do with it. My Nana, on the other hand, doesn't believe in the paranormal whatsoever and thought it would just be a fun game for myself, my brother, and the oldest of my two cousins. I left it on the dining room table for days before she made me put it away. I ended up sliding it under my bed in hopes of just forgetting about it. My brother and my cousin bugged me about it constantly because they wanted to play with it, and I wouldn't let them. I tried to explain to them it wasn't just a game and that it shouldn't be messed with. But they were preteen boys who couldn't help but do things they shouldn't do. One day after I got home from work, the boys were there, and I had this sneaking suspicion they played with it. I looked under my bed, and it was there. But I had this odd feeling about it. That's when I went downstairs and interrogated them about it. At first they denied it, but I saw right through them, and they finally admitted that they had played with it. I asked them if they had said goodbye when they were done, and they said they did. My cousin likes to over-exaggerate stories big time and makes things up and being overly dramatic. So, when he told me about a couple of things that supposedly happened, I didn't believe him at all. Also, they were boys who liked to mess with each other, so I assumed that's what was happening here. Anyways, a couple of nights later, I got in bed, and as I lay there trying to fall asleep, I get this feeling that I'm being watched. I looked over at my closet, which has two sliding doors, by the way, and I noticed one of the doors is slightly opened, leaving a small space between the doors. It creeped me out for some reason, so I turned and faced the other way, trying to ignore everything and fall asleep. I finally did fall asleep, and then the next thing I know, I'm woken up by what felt like someone or something hitting me in the back of the head. I was laying on my back, so the back of my head was fully on my pillow, which made it even weirder. And it wasn't a light hit, either. It freaked me out so much, I was shaking. I look around my room, and I don't see anything. But then all of a sudden, I hear my floor creaking like someone is walking around my bed. I'm so freaked out at this point, it was not funny. After laying there for a good little while, I finally got the courage to get up and grab my phone and book it to my living room. I sat down and tried to calm myself. 
I could still feel a tingling, pulsating sensation on the back of my head. I turned on my phone and realized it's three in the morning. I called my boyfriend, who is now my husband, with tears streaming down my face from being so freaked out. He didn't pick up, and I swear I called him another 15 to 20 times before I finally gave up. I sat in the chair until my Nana got up at around 6. I didn't tell her what happened because I knew she wouldn't believe me and would say I was acting stupid. After she got up, I had breakfast and then called my boyfriend again, and he finally picked up. He told me that his phone was on silent mode, so he didn't know I had been calling. I gave him so much shit for this, let me tell you. I told him what happened, and he felt so bad and felt like an idiot for having his phone on silent. He told me he would have came over in a heartbeat to comfort me and was so apologetic. Later that day, he came over and we took the Ouija board to a junkyard to get rid of it. My husband is the only one in my family that knows what happened, and I didn't experience anything again after I got rid of the Ouija board. Moral of the story, Ouija boards should not be messed with. Okay, so I'm that asshole. You know, that asshole who moves the planchette while playing with the Ouija board? I don't know why. I guess I just liked knowing it was the one responsible for scaring the shit out of people instead of something or someone I couldn't see. Or maybe I just didn't believe that a commercially made product could talk to ghosts. Who knows? But I, as found out, karma definitely is a bitch. One night in college, a friend of mine was over and we were studying. One of those ghost shows came on the television and they were messing around with a Ouija board. My friend Liz said offhandedly to me, you know, I've never played with one of those. I was definitely surprised. Ouija boards were such a staple of my childhood. Hundreds of sleepovers with me scaring the crap out of little girls by the moving of the planchette on the board and that whole light as a feather, stiff as a board shit. I couldn't fathom someone growing up and not experiencing it. I started talking about random experiences I've had with the board and tried to convince her it would be a great idea to run out to Walmart and buy one. Finally, I was successful and off we went. Our studies abandoned on the table. College priorities at its finest, I guess. After our Walmart trip, we got back to my apartment and opened the box. We spared no expense. It was the glow-in-the-dark special edition. Talk about class. Liz looks like she was about to piss herself as I explained how to put your fingers on the planchette. We lit some candles and turned off all the lights. Okay, so just ask whatever, I said, secretly smirking. Um, like what? She asked. I don't know, something fun, like when am I going to die or something like that. This was always one of my favorite questions for people to ask because while pushing the plan chat, I could really freak them out. I don't want to know that. Damn it. I was a bit disappointed, but went with it. I suggested just trying to open our minds and see who could come through. I was already planning to have JFK come through. Not many of my friends know I'm a huge JFK buff, so I can usually creep them out with the amount of knowledge the ghost of JFK knows about his assassination and whatnot. We put our fingers on the planchette and nothing happened. I was letting the tension grow before I started my pushing. It's always better to start slow. All of a sudden, the pointer starts to move and I wasn't pushing it for once. 
You can't push it, I yelled at her. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. I didn't want her to ruin my plan. I'm not, Liz shouted back. Well, obviously you are because I'm not. Aren't the ghosts supposed to move it? She asked. I guess she got me there. I just sat back and shut up and watched the planchette move. I was convinced she was moving it. She had to have been. There was no way a ghost was communicating with us through a glow-in-the-dark spirit board that I bought for seventeen ninety nine at Walmart. After a few minutes, we finally got a message. I am ISS. U-L-I-Z. Liz was, understandably, a bit freaked out that the spirit knew her name. I was too, but I kept telling myself she was moving it, whether it be subconsciously or not. We kept going. I-N-E-D-2-S-E-E-U-G-A-I-N-S-O-O-N. -E 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 -E. I need to see you again soon? What does that mean? Liz asked, getting more and more freaked out. I, I don't know, I said, and honestly meant what I said. I had no idea what was going on. I hate to admit it, but I was starting to get freaked out myself. The Ouija board never worked for me before. You're moving it, she yelled. No, I'm not, I swear. And I did swear. I wasn't moving it for once in my life. Yes, you are. She kept insisting I was moving it, but we kept going. The pointer stopped moving for a few minutes. I was intrigued, yet scared. I wanted to see what else it would do, but I was afraid of what I would find out. Finally, getting a bit impatient, I asked the first question of the night. Who is this? What do you want? I A M W Y L L. Hello, L I Z I S T I L L O B E U. Liz looked like she was going to lose her dinner all over the board. Who's Will? I asked. Seriously, are you moving it? Liz responded in a thin whisper. No. I told you I wasn't. Who's Will? He's... He's my ex-boyfriend who killed himself after we broke up. Really, are you moving it? Because this isn't funny. I tried to convince her that I wasn't, but she just didn't believe me. She sat there looking like, excuse the pun, she had just seen a ghost. I suggested we quit. Listen, Liz, obviously this is upsetting you. Let's just stop now. No, I need to know if he's okay, she said with a determined look on her face. But I have to make sure it's not just you pushing the fucking thing with me. After a bit of discussion, we decided that I would keep my fingers on the planchette, but keep my head down and not look. That way, I wouldn't know where to push it. I agreed and sat there feeling more and more uneasy. I put my head down and closed my eyes, trying to focus all of my energy or whatever the hell ghost will needed to maybe bring closure to Liz. After about a minute of sitting there with my head down and eyes closed, I started to go cold all over. It was unlike any other feeling of cold I have ever had. The only way to describe it is that my bones were cold and it was chilling me from the inside out. I tried to brush it off. Maybe there was a draft coming in from the cool spring air outside. Then, without warning, my head, for lack of a better term, exploded with all of these gruesome images I couldn't control. It was as if any single irrational or rational fear I had throughout the course of my life multiplied its intensity by a thousand and slammed into my brain at the same time. It only seemed to last for a second, 
and a year at the same time, but regardless of however long it was, every single image was burnt into my brain. I jerked away from the table, trying not to scream. What's wrong? Liz asked, smiling at me. What the fuck was she smiling about? I don't know what... Why are you smiling? What the fuck is so funny? I could barely contain myself. Deep down, I knew I was acting crazy, but I couldn't help it. Nothing's funny. I'm just smiling because I had the nicest conversation with Will. He doesn't blame me. Uh, what the hell do you mean? I snapped again. It's only been like a fucking minute since we started. Liz's face scrunched up in confusion. What do you mean? I've been talking to Will for the last two hours. Okay, what in the actual fuck? Needless to say, I was a bit creeped out. Okay, more than creeped out. I was terrified. I threw that damn board back in the box as quick as I could and blew out all of the candles. I shoved the box into a closet as far back as it would go. I didn't want to look at it anymore. I announced abruptly that I was going to drive Liz home and opened the door, trying to hurry her. It was definitely out of character. She obliged, however, and we got into the car. The whole five-minute drive seemed like an eternity. I could swear I'd see things on the side of the road, but at a second glance, there was nothing there. Images I had seen of my babysitter mutilated and whatnot from the weird trance-like dream I had started to shimmer in the corners of my eyes. I swerved about a million times thinking I was going to hit one of these things, but nothing was there. By the time we got to her apartment, Liz looked at me like I was crazy. Are you sure you're okay? She asked. Yeah, just get out of the damn car already. I snapped back at her, almost surprising myself with how mean I was being. Though I fully admit to fucking with people while using Ouija boards. I really am a nice person, I swear. Liz did as I asked and I sped away, eager to get to the safety of my apartment. When I opened the door, I noticed two things right away. It was about 30 degrees in my apartment and all of the blinds and curtains were wide open. I was confused, but I tried not to let my mind wander. I shut all of the curtains and cranked the heat. It was April, so it was freezing outside, but it wasn't hot either. Normal springtime weather. After shutting all of the blinds and whatnot, I sat on the couch and tried to turn on the lamp. The light went on and then popped off. I again tried to shake it off as a shitty coincidence. I changed the light bulb and went to turn it on again pop out again i went to go turn on the overhead light instead pop all of the bulbs popped off at the same time at about this point i was basically pissing my pants i was so scared but i tried to remain as calm as i could it wasn't easy let me tell you i grabbed as many blankets as i could and sat on the couch in the dark living room I was going to light the candles we had used when we used the board, but I didn't want anything related to that fucking thing around me at all. I turned on the television and blared it, hoping that I could just attribute any noise and flash of something in the corner of my eyes to the television. Oh, come on. You know you've done it too. Unfortunately, it didn't work. I was just starting to doze off when this loud beeping woke me up. It sounded like the worst alarm clock ever. It was coming from the closet where I had thrown the Ouija board. I slowly went over and opened the door. Out fell an old alarm clock. I think it was my roommate's. I hope it was my roommate's. Blaring uncontrollably. I hurriedly shut the door so the Ouija board would stay in there, 
and I started looking at the clock to turn it off. Not only were there no batteries in it, nor was it plugged in anywhere, but the time flashing on the clock was 4.16 a.m. My birthday. What in the actual fuck? Needless to say, I threw that damn thing quite far and it broke into a million pieces. I wish it stopped there. I really do. But little did I know, that was just the warm-up, so to say. The opening act to a three-act shit show that had become my life. I have to go to work right now, or I would tell you more. Though I hope this is enough to convince everyone, never ever fuck with a Ouija board. This is a ten-part series, so two through ten I will read in the next Ouija video. Here's a bit of a backstory. I'm the youngest of four brothers, all a year apart. At this time, I was about nine years old, and our family friend was spending the night at our place. We lived in a two-story house with a basement. At the time, our mother was single and dating a lot, so during this particular night, she was away. We saw how to make a Ouija board on this episode of a show called Mystery Hunters on YTV. It's a Canadian kids channel. So we decided it would be a fun thing to try while we had the house to ourselves. So we cut up an old box and made a Ouija board out of it. I put felt on the bottom of the triangular thing so it would slide better and it worked pretty well. We all tried putting our fingers on the triangle once and asking questions, but we were getting no response. We each tried putting our fingers on the triangle and got no response. Then, me and one of my brothers asked a question to the likes of, Is there a demon here? And the triangle started to move. We looked at each other and the expression on our faces showed that it was neither of us moving the triangle. We immediately got scared and ran into the kitchen. When we got into the kitchen, we heard a crash come from the living room. It sounded like our TV fell off the wall unit. We ran back into the living room to find that nothing was there. After this, we decided to grab the Bible. We were a religious family at the time. And read. The first words we read in unison were, God's people are doomed. Frightened by this, we turned on the TV. We saw it was Dave Chappelle, so we assumed it was going to be something funny. But then, when the audio began, the first words from Dave was, And all the people died. To which the audience started laughing and then went to commercial. Freaked out by both of these things, the waterworks began, and we all ran upstairs crying and screaming to my brother's bedroom. When we got up the stairs and into his bedroom, we heard footsteps that sounded exactly like ours run up the stairs after us. Immediately, I assumed it was one of my brothers or our friend laid up the stairs. But when we realized we were all in the room and no one passed by the door, we began to panic and held each other, freaking out. Hard to say if we heard anything after this point. So this was the last that happened. For now. About two hours later, me and my brother, the bravest of the four, decided that this might all be in our heads and that we would go play video games on my mom's computer in her office. Diablo 2 to be exact. The door to her office had no handle, so my brother pushed the door open. Immediately after he pushed the door open, it slammed back on his arm and all the way from the basement we heard clear, loud laughing. The only way I could describe it was the sound of a witch. Echo throughout the entire house, all the way upstairs. At this point, we ran down the stairs, out the door into my grandmother's house, which was down the street, and waited for my mom to come home. 
I'm not sure if she completely believed us, but this was when we were kids. I am 23 years old now, and this story sticks out as one of the only and craziest paranormal experiences I have ever had. I've had this little girl spirit follow me for years at an old house I lived in until I was around 13. She started showing up after my Nana died. There was always something about my Nana's, but I was always at her house. Things I can remember clearly are that she would leave a chair at the back door because a man spirit would sit there at night. I saw a couple of times, but never felt any malicious intent from him. Sometimes when I would wake up, I would see dolls, maybe about six. She kept on her dresser that they would be turning their heads from side to side. A couple of times I've woken up in different parts of the house and don't remember how I got there. Continuing on. We moved to a new house, and the first thing I realized was that the mirrors were all turned around. I asked the lady who showed us the house why. Her response, that I didn't think much of at the time, was that the previous owner had them all turned around. The same owner that had fallen ill and was now hospitalized. I don't know the reason, but I could only assume it had to do with this haunted house. One weekend, I decided to take a nap. I got this sudden urge to grab my phone and take a picture of my room. Lo and behold, I had dead right evidence that this little girl was right there. I was stunned that I got her so clearly in my photo. She had long black hair that reached half down her back and covered her face. Her clothes blue but tattered and dirty. She was small looking. What followed was something that made me, one, never want to touch a Ouija board and two, never take a photo when urged to. What followed is something that still haunts me to this day. It started after I showed my parents what I got on my phone. My dad saw it clearly and passed it off, and nothing really but my mother didn't even want to see. I don't blame her. The days that followed, things in the house got heavy. It started when my little brother's room, he was about four or five. He had a TV in there with a VHS player that would turn on and full blast the static noise. Did this a couple times before we got rid of it. For my dad, he accounted a story of living his dream and being woken up to something grabbing his hand. Thinking it might have been my little brother, he sleepily opened his eyes. After realizing it wasn't my brother, he tried to pull his hand away when he says something with power grabbed his hand and stayed there. I never heard a story other than this one that made him give me a scared look. A couple of friends that came over, both from two different circles, were mini-possessed, I think. They would black out and just start walking toward the back of my house, where my parents' and brother's bedroom was. I had to shake them and ask what they were doing, and both times I was answered with an, I don't know. It didn't stop. The assault from these entities was ongoing. I once had a small group of friends, about three of us, and we were in the living room. When the TV turned on, blasting again, I got up to go turn it off, but was met with a loud thud coming from my brother's room. Taking a step forward, the thud sounded like it had moved closer. Frozen, we all just waited and this thud started coming down the hall, getting louder, and just then, it was about to go around the corner. My dad opens the front door and everything goes silent. And the air lifts, but it scared all of us enough to jump out of our seats. My friends left after that. 
Now to the Ouija part. Not knowing what to do, I reached out to a good friend whose sister was into the paranormal very heavily. She said we should do a Ouija reading. I was raised in a very religious household, and we were always taught that the touch of a Ouija was pretty much damning yourself to hell. Scared, I refused. I was met with an offer to do it outside at a park nearby, and I wouldn't even have to touch it. Not a bad idea, so I accepted. That night, we headed to the park at around 9.30. They set up and start right on the money, asking if any spirit was nearby or wanting to talk. No go. We do this for about five minutes with no response. I was asked if I could touch the piece just to establish a connection with whatever was following me specifically. I hesitate but lay my fingers on the planchette. Same question, this time with answers very quickly. My friend's sister asked most of the questions. The spirit said it was good, that it was protecting me from zero, when all of a sudden it just started spelling something and repeated it three times. C-U-L-S-E. 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 At the moment, a police officer shows up with his spotlight on us, gets out and walks towards our group. We tell the spirit goodbye and close all doors. The cop asks what we were doing at the park. Apparently, the park closes at 10. Well, past 10, we apologize and start packing up to go. Something made me look at the officer's name tag. Shocking me, it read, C-U-L-S-E. I turned around and told my friends, and they were in disbelief. We told the officer in a quick summary what happened, and, of course, he didn't believe it. To this day, it shakes me to my very core to think of the paranormal I've experienced, but by far the craziest would be with the board itself. Never ever again will I touch one of those cursed boards. Morning. I'm religious, so I might have some bias, superstition, skepticism in here. I apologize in advance. So, I'm not quite sure where else to share my story. It's not exactly scary, but I've had my moments. So, a few years ago, my freshman year of college, I got in with a friend group that was really into doing the Ouija board for fun. We'd have nights where we'd be in the basement of the dorm, snacks and blankets all around us in the study room, just summoning ghosts for shits and giggles. Now, it doesn't exactly help with the fact that the town our school is in is nicknamed Second Salem because there was rumored witchcraft practicing like a hundred years ago. If that's true, nobody really knows, but that doesn't stop urban legends about a haunted water tower near campus popping up or an actual club on campus being a paranormal investigation team. I digress. So, the first time I went on the board, I was given rules that I don't entirely know if they are true. Mainly that you have to move the planchette in a clockwise motion a few times and then stop, like opening a gate, I think. I don't know. But it seemed to work. Long story short, my first time on the board, I met a protection spirit I had had for several years but didn't know, named Adam. He gave me a description of himself and stuff, and he was the first one on the board for every session I was on. I should also note, we never played alone. Later sessions would lead to people meeting family members. I'm still skeptical on whether or not that was real. I'm still shaken up by some family members' deaths 
and wanted nothing more than to talk to them again. I got to talk to someone claiming to be this family member and, for the record, asking them questions only they would know garnered the correct responses. A good part of me is skeptical on this. However, because this could be just wishful thinking or something sinister in disguise. Speaking of sinister, holy shit, we got a lot of demons. I almost got possessed twice. The first time everyone went to get food and I decided to stay and watch our stuff while I was alone, despite being by the heater, I was ice cold. I also felt tired, like I couldn't get up from my chair. We asked the board when everyone came back, as I apparently looked super tired, and the spirit on the board said I was almost possessed, and we should stop for the night. We had some real idiots in the group who pressed onward. I eventually left, putting some salt I had under my door just in case. The second time, I watched a possession of some kind. I was on the board in a demon. We had two main ones. NMNM or Aham. Thankfully, never the Z one. Was taunting us. We noticed any one friend was super quiet, and we look over to see her rocking back and forth and staring at the ceiling, unresponsive. We quickly said goodbye on the board and shook her out of it. She was fine and had no idea what was happening. We got on again after taking a break and I suddenly began to feel like I was seeing out of someone else's eyes. I felt dizzy and like my body wasn't in my control. I snapped out of this trance somehow and my friend said I wasn't responding for a good four to five minutes. We didn't play the board for at least two weeks after that. We were too shaken up. My final fear story is a two-parter. Part one. I was on the board with a friend and suddenly started getting dizzy. I saw a figure in front of me that was a little girl with like all black on. One of her eyes was like, I don't know, infected? But it was all black, with like cracks across her face. She looked fucking terrifying, and for some reason, I couldn't bring myself to look her in the face. I snapped out of it, thanks to my friends shaking me, and said I wanted to stop for the night. Part 2 Later that night, a friend of mine saw the exact same figure watching him as he slept. Same creepy little girl, same freakish face. 100% sure it was a demon of some kind. Those are my little antidotes. I haven't played with the board in, I don't know, maybe a year. I'm interested in people's inputs on my experiences. It's some of the most scariest things I've ever dealt with. Oh, and before I forget... There was something about the demons attaching to us or others with poor mental health. I supposedly had at least one with me and had migraines, increased depressive thoughts, and like a clawing feeling on my shoulder. I couldn't see any marks or anything, so I probably just had a shoulder ache. I'd love to hear any feedback or input. I'm sure this is a pretty vanilla story, but it's not like I can go share this with just anyone. I used Session, quite a strong aversion to Ouija boards, which started, mm, I don't know when, and ended some time around the ages of 16 or 17, when I used one for the first time. Fast forward another one to two years, and my cousin and I have been using that board properly nearly every weekend, at least one, if not both nights, since the first time. It had become one of our favorite pastimes. 
Sometimes we'd have other friends join us, but it was always at least us. We took it very, very seriously, were as careful as we knew how to be, always had good results, and nothing bad ever came of it. Well, outside of our first experience, but that's another story. Other than that one time, however, we had plenty of both cool and or creepy experiences, but two stand out above all others. One I wouldn't call a positive experience because of the insinuated nature of the speaker who came through, but neither was the experience itself inherently negative. The other I wouldn't call a negative experience again just because of the nature of the speaker who came through, but neither was the experience itself inherently positive. We haven't used a Ouija board since and have kids now, so we probably never will. To this day, nearly half of my lifetime later, I still don't know what to make of our other experience. In the first of these two instances, we spoke at length with a being that would not give us its name, but, much to our amusement, told us to simply call it Chewy. Yeah, really. You read that correctly, and it's true. The Chewy went on to share some highly questionable and objectionable things, but we weren't put off because we had come to suspect we weren't talking to our usual sort of speaker, and we wanted to get answers. When we asked what we were speaking to, the board spelled out D-E-M-O, and then it stopped. We all looked at each other, knowing full well, as you do now, what Chewy was spelling out. We closed the line and ended the session as we always took care to do, if not a little more eagerly than usual. Sometime later, Days, weeks, months, I cannot remember. We were at it again. This time we spoke with a being who was a self-proclaimed angel, earthbound for reasons that were neither fully explained, or which have been partly forgotten, which included being my guardian angel. They named themselves Sek, which at the time meant next to nothing to me. Noted. Thereafter, we couldn't seem to get anyone else on the board. Eventually, sometime between sessions, the board warped. We got out of practice of using it, and I never saw the board and planchette in the same place again. Much more recently, the thought of this came to mind out of the blue, and I tried looking it up to see if it was a thing, but the only thing I could find out was... Sekhmet, the Egyptian goddess. I had no formal knowledge of demons, angels, or deities, especially in a magical sense or on a personal level. Plenty of people claim to have contacted demons who specifically name themselves. But what are people's experiences with angels and or deities? And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true Ouija stories. Before I go any further, I would like to acknowledge the elite members of Back to Ashes along with our gifted memberships. Luz Crispin, Patty's Niece, Samantha Place, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, Stephanie McLaren, Chrissy Elias, Denise S., Tina Mead, Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Dova Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Amy Klimko, Sugared Spite, and Anita V., Thank you all so much for remaining the pillars of which Back to Ashes stands upon. I cannot express my gratitude anymore, but just a humble thank you. And for our gifted memberships, The Conspiracy Archives, Grimm's Library, Adam Grigg, Nat Davies, and The Cryptid Sleeps. Thank you all so much for your support, and to the other subscribers and or just listeners, Thank you as well for supporting Back to Ashes, for without you, I would have no voice. 
If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. In the meantime, please take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.